is a guy who, when he promises you something, it actually happens, which is a rarity these days. People always promising things. So I'm most anxious and I'm most honored to bring Matt up here and listen to what he has to say. Sai, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to talk with uh, your group today. Uh, Sai has been a dear friend of mine for many years. Uh, his work in public education as an educator, a principal, a superintendent uh, is, is a legend in this city. As I walked in uh, today, Merrill Tish, who uh, is also a dear friend and someone who I greatly admired, whispered in my ear. And I said, is this public? And she said, it is public, but I think I'm the first to announce it in, in a big group like this, that New York State is one of the 12 states that have made the finals for Race to the Top. And that's a big deal. I am, uh, I'm going to talk about um, a subject that is really relatively new for me, uh, a subject that um, I started to think about deeply uh, maybe uh, two or three years ago, probably three years ago. And it's about community colleges, uh, a, uh, a, an, an asset class uh, in higher education that I think has been ignored uh, for too long uh, a period of time. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about why I really started to think about community colleges and uh, really to bring this at a national level because I think that unless we bring it to a national level, we're going to have high opportunity costs to play here uh, in these United States and I think it's something that we really ought to um, get our arms around. And it started, uh, and this is an absolutely true story, it started uh, with a sleepless night and I have occasional sleepless nights as all of us. And I was walking around my apartment. Uh, my wife was fast asleep. It was about 2.30 in the morning. And I was, of all things, worrying about why do we have such low graduation rates in community colleges around the United States? It doesn't matter where you look. Uh, Three-year graduation rates uh, are hovering around 25%. Uh, and as the time goes on be beyond three years, uh, the data doesn't change that dramatically. And I said to myself, there's got to be a set of reasons that account for the large variance that we're, we're trying to explain in why this is happening. I'm going to throw out some data, and I usually don't like to do this, but data that really surprised me is actually Gail Mello who first uh, told me about a piece of data. And I'm going to announce another piece of data that really just floored me, and I just heard about it uh, yesterday. So why community colleges? Our conversation today is born out of many of these sleepless nights, as I have just said. This country's community colleges are the largest and fastest growing sector in higher education, something that very few people really under don't understand. They enroll almost half of all undergraduates in the United States. And they are the focal point of national and state economic recovery efforts. They provide affordable degree and training programs for the country's skilled workforce. But most of the country probably knows next to nothing about community colleges. In fact, during the first half of 2009, just 1.4% of national news coverage from television, newspapers, news websites, and radio dealt with education. That's all education, K through 12, and higher education. And of that paltry amount, 1.4% of the coverage is about education, K through 12 and higher education. 
But of that 1.4%, less than 3% of 1.4% is devoted to community colleges. And I know a little about math. That's about 0.042%. Thank you, Barbara, for correcting my decimal point the other day. <laughs> President Obama has said, and I quote, community colleges are an undervalued asset in our country. Not only is that not right, it's not smart, he said. And he's right. If you want to get a lens on the future of our country, its workforce, its social and economic development, its capacity to innovate, then you have to understand what is happening at our community colleges. CUNY's six community colleges serve more than 88,000 degree-seeking students. And I'm going to pause here and acknowledge our community college presidents because they are doing a phenomenal job and they really deserve the attention that I think we need to give them. So thank you, Gail. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Tony. But over the last decade, we've seen an enrollment increase by an astounding 43% at our community colleges. It's akin to adding New York University's entire undergraduate student population. And CUNY is not alone. In 2008, the share of young people attending college in the United States hit an all-time high. And it's an increase that took place entirely at our community colleges. Check the data. More and more students, especially in this economy, understand the incredible value that a community college education offers, quality plus accessibility. In fact, almost 20%, now here is the data that knocked me off my feet. In fact, almost 20% of Americans who earned doctorates in 2008 started their education at a community college. One in five doctoral degrees in the United States conferred to Americans in 2008 were to students who started their education at a community college. And I'm sure many of you are shocked about that datum as I was when I read it just the other day. So who goes to community colleges? At CUNY, three out of five community college students are women. About two-thirds are black or Hispanic, and about 46% say that their native language is not English, and three-quarters come from families earning under $40,000 per year. These students come from diverse backgrounds and have a range of aspirations. They need and they deserve the best education we can offer, and we need their skills and their talents. As the nation's economy continues to become one requiring more sophisticated skills, advanced degrees are increasingly necessary. A new report indicates that jobs for those with associate degrees are expected to grow twice as fast as the national average. Yet at a time when our country needs more college graduates, we are just continuing to lose ground. The United States post-secondary graduation rate sits below the average of its peers among the 30 country organization for economic cooperation and development. In addition, American 15-year-olds scored below this OEEC average in science literacy and in mathematics. If our country is going to compete globally, it must educate locally by helping more students succeed to the highest possible levels. It has been gratifying to see that recent national and local initiatives recognize this fundamental fact. The a federal American graduation initiative announced last summer has a goal of graduating an additional 5 million Americans
from two-year colleges by the year 2020. Mayor Bloomberg's Gateway to the Middle Class initiative pledges $50 million over the next couple of years to CUNY's community colleges to increase this city's skilled labor force. The goal is to graduate New Yorkers, to graduate 120,000 New Yorkers by the year 2020. These are promising and welcome initiatives, but a troubling reality remains. Too many students are unprepared for college level work and too few graduate. It's not enough to talk about access to college. It is attainment of a college degree that will most help students and our country. But today, the national three-year graduation rate for urban public community colleges is about 16 percent. What's more, poor students and students of color are not only underrepresented in higher education nationally, but also less likely to graduate with a degree. I have said it repeatedly, a degree just matters. Degree, degree recipients earn more, have better food and housing security, are healthier and participate more in their communities. So why don't more students graduate? We know that financial pressures, family obligations, work schedules, and even a lack of information are factors for many students. But as remediation rates point out, a significant reason is the disconnect between students' skill levels and what is expected when they arrive at a college or a university. This is why improving students' preparedness for college is so critically important. Many students don't take enough college preparatory courses while they're in high school. Some studies show that students are much more likely to finish college if they took college preparatory algebra in high school. One well-known researcher puts it, this, puts it this way, the academic intensity of a student's high school curriculum still counts more than anything else. Another way to say that is the strength of the high school curriculum accounts for the majority of the variance that we see in the preparation and success when people come to college. Success in college doesn't start the first day of your freshman year. It starts long before that. All of you know that. No one knows that better than my colleague, Joel Klein. It's why, in my estimation, he's doing such important work in turning around our public schools. Almost 70% of CUNY enrollees come from New York City public schools. So it's imperative that we, we work closely with the schools to ensure that students are well prepared. CUNY has in place several collaborative programs with the DOE to, to encourage college readiness and participation. These include College Now, a dual enrollment program that serves about 20,000 public high school students, as well as a middle grades initiative and yes, we run 11 early college schools. One of our newest and most promising partnerships with the DOE is called the CUNY DOE College Readiness and Success Working Group, which grew out of initial conversations that Joel and I have had over the last couple of years. The initiative brings together both systems to find the specific factors that determine college readiness and success, to, and, and success and to improve both. Representatives from CUNY and the DOE are comb combing through research to pinpoint stumbling blocks and identify curriculum alignment issues between high school and college. The group will be able to tell high schools how their graduates have performed at CUNY, a piece of information 
every teacher should have, and to identify promising programs that can be scaled up to a, to a level that certainly is going to make the difference that we all aspire for. Given what we already know about improving the retention, performance, and graduation rates of students, we set out in 2007 to create a new program specifically designed to help college, community college students graduate in a timely way and to gain employment. This ASAP initiative, an acronym that stands for Accelerated Study in Associate Programs, was created from a breakfast I had with Mayor Mike Bloomberg and uh, resulted in a partnership with the New York City Center for Economic Opportunity and the New York City Council. And let me tell you a little about this. It began with just over a thousand students and now is underway at all of our six community colleges. The program is really quite straightforward. One of the key principles that emerged in our initial discussions was the importance of minimizing students' uncertainty. You don't hear people talk about the need for minimizing uncertainty. And why? Because entering college can be daunting and confusing. Incoming community college students find themselves in large, complex institutions with numerous departments and majors and multi-labored procedures for financial aid, registration, and advising. Many students arrive poorly prepared. They have very weak study habits and few experienced family members and friends to whom they can turn to for counsel. In addition, their education is often competing for time against their very real need to earn a living, to pay bills, and to support a family. With so many factors inhibiting their ability to fu fully engage with their academic pursuits, we knew that the ASAP initiative had to focus on addressing these barriers and streamlining their experiences. To that end, ASAP students receive a rich set of financial incentives and they agree to study full time in order to immerse themselves in the academic material. They are grouped together in cohorts to take small classes in convenient scheduling blocks in order to better concentrate their time, develop a support network, and complete their assignments, minimizing uncertainty. All of them receive comprehensive academic advisement and career development services to help maintain their focus. Taken together, the program's components are designed to reduce uncertainty and create clear and meaningful pathways. Our goal for the ASAP is ambitious. A three-year graduation rate of 50% substantially above the national average. So today, I am pleased to announce that our most recent data show that 46% of the ASA, ASAP students are projected to graduate in just two and a half years, well above the comparison 16% rate. And based on all predictors, we can expect a three-year graduation rate of 60% for our ASAP students compared to the same comparison group of 24%. Thank you, members of John Mogulescu's staff who are here with us today for making this important event happen. The lessons we're learning from the ASAP initiative are informing an even more ambitious project that we are pursuing, the development of a new community college in Manhattan. Let me just pause for a moment. It costs us about $10,000 to educate a community college student per year. That's a very, very small number. 
when you think about the cost of educating a student. The ASAP student is a much more costly enterprise. It's probably going to increase that cost by maybe 45%. But think of the investment and the implication of what that investment would be from going from a 24% graduation rate to a 60% graduation rate. Think about how that is going to affect our workforce in this city and beyond, and how with the skills that they are provided will be an enabling phenomenon to assist them in competing in a highly contentious and highly competitive work environment that now is compromising so many of our students because they don't have the degree. From where I sit, when you, you churn out the numbers, this is a very, very smart investment to make. But I want to scale this up even further. And I'm always thinking about, take a project, think it through, and then see if you can scale it up. Because if you can't scale it up, it's not going to have the kind of effect on the society that we want. So we're learning from the ASAP initiative and informing this must, much more ambitious project which we have. Our enrollment surges would naturally lead us to think about the possibility of an additional campus, especially in Manhattan, which is served by only one community college, Borough of Manhattan Community College, a campus that is bursting at the seams with about 22,000 students. And Antonio Perez, the president there, is on the phone with me on a regular basis. What do you say, Tony? I need more space. And he does. So we need to have more seats uh, in Manhattan, which only has this one important community college. But our focus in thinking about a new college has been less on alleviating space concerns than on how we might reimagine community college education. We are emboldened by the initial results of the ASAP initiative and by the new practices already underway at our existing community colleges, which in my estimation are really doing important work. The next question is how to embed the successful approaches into the framework for an entirely new institution. Thank you, Tracy Mead, for the work that you've done on the ASAP. Without your doggedliness and your focus, uh, and, and not Tracy Mead, I'm sorry. Donna Lindeman. Donna Lindeman. Where is Tracy? Tracy is next door. Tracy is working on the new community college, so I'm, I'm but thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Donna. And, and thank you, John Mogulescu, who is our, our senior university dean for academic affairs in overseeing the development of the new community college by drawing on the best research practices and scholars both at CUNY and nationally. Extensive input has been gathered through more than, I'm told, 150 meetings. Is that correct, uh, John? with faculty and staff, online surveys, and consultations with experts from academia, government, and business. Our goal is simple. It's to increase student success. We can't increase student success. Then I'm not interested in moving ahead and making big, important investments and making a lot of people crazy uh, to, to listen to what it is. So I am about improving graduation rates so that these students, when they enter the workforce, are going to be well prepared to compete. Our development process has suggested some significant departures from the traditional college structure. Things like pre-college interviews and assessments. We do this at colleges and universities all over the United States, but we don't do anything like this at a community college. Required full-time enrollment during the first year. People say they can't go full-time. Well, it turns out that at CUNY, 87% of our community college students go the first year as full-time students. So going from 87 to 100% is not a big lift. 
things like um, a common first year curriculum, college, college wide learning communities, an office of partnership to establish employer relationships, and a single college wide theme centered around the sustaining and thriving New York City. All of these components address our overall imperative, and that is to engage students even before the first day and every day after that. We must use every tool to help them achieve real proficiency. Our work has garnered a generous grant and sustained interest from the Gates Foundation and the Carnegie Corporation. Planning is now in the hands of 11 working committees and discussions about budgets, facilities, and hiring are well underway. We envisage implementing implementation will not be easy, but there is no reason to start a community college that is reimagined if we are not fully invested in implementing these new and bold approaches and doing everything we can do to enable our students to perform to their potential and earn a degree that will maximize future opportunities. The same is true for all of our community colleges. We must be willing to engage in a national conversation about preparing students for college challenging them academically, and supporting their likelihood for success. And we must be willing to try new ideas to reconsider what we thought we knew. It's not an exaggeration to say that our future depends on our students' success. As one of our ASAP students recently said, as he received his associate degree, just three and a half years after arriving in this country and not speaking English. ASAP has given me all the tools I need to work, to learn, and to achieve my goals. But the most important lesson that they have taught me is the ability to remain focused and to believe in myself. For our community colleges, it's as simple as that and it's as difficult as that. Thank you very much.